Welcome back. In this week's episode, I'm talking to Francesca Ludovico from Dublin about how she got into sourcing, the sourcing community in Dublin, and what she's up to next. This is a Sourcing Challenge show, and I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. I started off by asking Francesca how she got into sourcing. Well, uh, let's say that if we want to really dig deep, but very, very deep in my experience, I started my first recruitment experience when I was, I think, 15, 16, helping my mother finding jobs for herself because mm-hmm. suddenly she was without a job and she was not very much into technology and uh, so she was not really able to use the computer. So I started sourcing jobs for her, putting job ads for her as a candidate on the platforms to get people to contact her in case she had jobs. Because in Italy, uh, let's say recruitment agencies don't really work the same way they work Mm -hmm. uh, here in Dublin or in uh, the UK. So it was a little bit more challenging finding a job for a person. So that was my first approach in recruitment. And uh, I mean, I was more her secretary than her (laughs) recruiter. Yeah. But it, it was fun. I mean, I started learning. I made her CV. And uh, eventually, uh, after that, uh, I mean, I was going to school. I was going to university after again. And uh, um, people would come to me while I was at university to ask advice on how to make their CV. Because apparently, I was good at that. And uh, <laughs> also at other jobs. Because I started uh, my first job first office job in a call center Mm -hmm. so much fun Uh, and um, there I mean nobody really wanted to be there it was more a job before finding something else and also the company knew that so it was not a big problem Uh, so yeah my colleagues started to ask advice on CV and uh, yeah uh, they, they started to tell their friends that I was good at that so I got more people uh, doing that with me they started yeah. to pay me money and uh, it was nice then uh, um, at some point I got hired for a company a trading company mm-hmm. uh, Chinese that, that would sell raw materials to other trading companies across Europe I was supposed to do sales yeah so growing accounts and uh, finding new prospects but eventually they asked me also to hire new people for the company that would take care of other markets. And uh, that was actually my real recruitment experience. And Mm -hmm. I found out I really liked it. But then eventually I left that company and I didn't know, do I want to do sales or I want to do recruitment? Yeah. So um, I took a job for six months. Just It was a very easy sales support job, nothing crazy. More to focus on uh, what I want to do and find out. So go to career coach and stuff like that. And eventually I went into recruitment um, with the IT recruitment agency. Uh, The thing, it was not really for me because it was a lot of KPIs and targets and you have to generate revenue. And it was not that much focus on uh, um, candidate experience and helping people. So I was like, is recruitment really like this? Um, and then I'm like, then I don't like it if it's like this. Also, yeah. people started to tell me, no, recruitment is not for you. Okay. I started to think, then what, I, what am I supposed to do? Till when uh, I joined Manpower in Ireland. Uh, and there I discovered that, yes, recruitment was for me because they put me there to manage strategic accounts. So it was basically in-house recruitment through mm-hmm. an agency. And uh, I was one of the best I did great I had also an amazing manager John McGrath one of the best managers I've ever had in my life and uh, he taught me a lot and uh, he motivated me constantly and uh, set me up for success really so there is where I got I would say my first real proper nice recruitment experience don't get me wrong in the past it was super nice Uh, I learned a lot but it was not as like close to what I wanted to do. Yeah. While there, it was really enjoyable. Like I, I didn't look at the time one single moment during the day because I was having a lot of fun at work. 
Then I joined Indeed because a friend of mine told me there was an opening and he referred me. There I was more focused on sourcing and uh, it was a very good experience, mostly for the networking piece, I would mm-hmm. say. I got to know a lot of nice people and uh, I got more into the sourcing and recruitment community. And also I had the chance to put into practice my technical skills. That was yeah. really good. Especially with manpower, like did you have a lot of trainings or where did you kind of, you know, where did you go to learn new things and, and to, to just improve yourself? I didn't really have that much training. It was all basically learn there on the way. Yeah. So I had the chance to do everything the way I wanted. Uh, so my manager would give me the possibility to manage processes in my own way. Mm-hmm. So the way I did that was mostly what would make sense? What would I like from a recruiter? How Mm -hmm. would I want to be treated? And that's uh, how I was basically managing uh, my candidates. While for the technical aspect, I would mostly uh, read blogs. I was reading the SourceCon blog. Mm -hmm. I was reading also, there is the Indeed blog that is Mm -hmm. very nice. I was in some Facebook uh, groups as well. The only training we got was the online training with social talent. Mm -hmm. Really good base. But then, of course, you need something else to expand your knowledge. Yeah, go more into detail. Obviously, coming from Italy and like where things work completely different and then working in Ireland and working internationally in the EU or in in all the kind of European countries, what's what's the kind of big difference from you, from Italy and and to how you work now? Well, in Italy, I didn't really work. So... Um, I don't know uh, how it works, but I hear from a lot of my friends that uh, the market there is completely different. There are not enough jobs or maybe not enough qualified jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I don't know. When I hear stories of my friends that they have to fight to get some time off or they really have to plan things much in advance, I'm like, this to me doesn't make any sense I just can't relate no so I don't know in the Netherlands I was at the beginning of my career there so uh, I understand that I couldn't aspire at uh, all that flexibility and uh, all those cool things that more senior people have so I was fine with that I understood it but when I came here I saw a completely different world in Ireland very international very open flexible with many things and uh, uh, people would actually support you and help you and would treat you like a human being yeah what's the the kind of sourcing community been like in Dublin like who you know who do you kind of go to network with and and what's that kind of community look like for you in Dublin I would say that my uh, sourcing community is a bit more international Dublin, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know that much about sorcerers in Dublin. Uh, I was working with Tris before, and he was in Dublin, but now he's gone uh, to Paris. I got to know great people from the Dutch community, like uh, Shamila, for example. And uh, I got to know you, but you are, again, in uh, London. So the, the people that I know are all a little bit spread around. So it is more online communities. Mm-hmm. Uh, where where we all meet. Even David, that just joined Indeed, he's yeah. great at sourcing. And uh, I think one of the best people from the technical aspect that I've ever met. Uh, but again, he comes for, from France. So maybe actually in Dublin, there is a sort of a shortage of talents. Yeah, it seems very much like there's there's some good local people, but a lot of it is that, yeah, people like, like us who who moved to Dublin to either start their career or it's been there for a while. In terms of the kind of tools and and processes that you like using, what's your kind of go-to in in, in terms of sourcing of what you've been doing? When I was working in Manpower, for example, I was sourcing more for technical profiles. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would go mostly on um, uh, gaming communities, on Reddit, on GitHub as well, and... uh, also through my friends, my network, I would see our mutual connections for people working in the technical field. And because eventually developers or engineers are contacted by recruiters constantly. Yeah. So you always have to find a more innovative way. While 
when I was in Indeed, my focus was mostly sales. And uh, there, you, we would just go mostly with the traditional way because people, where are salespeople? LinkedIn, Indeed Resume, uh, maybe on Facebook, even on Instagram or Twitter, you can find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, sometimes I would be supporting also other type of roles, but my focus was mostly sales there. So I would say there was not that much space for creativity in mm -hmm. that case. And what's, uh, what's something exciting that, uh, that you're working on now or that you're going to be working on? Right now, of course, I'm going to start with SurveyMonkey. And uh, that's going to be very exciting because from a kind of junior position that I had before at Indeed, now I'm going to start in a position where I have to set up a full new office by myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, like now there are very few people five, seven, I don't know. I mean, I went to the office, there was literally almost <laughs> nobody. And they said, yeah, you have to hire everyone. You, I'm going to be the first recruiter in EMEA, so I'm going to lead all the recruitment operations there mm -hmm. by myself. And uh, that's going to be very challenging, but also very exciting because I'm just going to put really myself out there. So it's either good Either I'm good. I don't have any choice but being good. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's all on you. So you're going to have to find a way. People want to stay in touch with you, with you Francesca, and yeah, see what, see what the work you're going to be doing as SurveyMonkey. How can they best do that? Uh, they can, uh, of course, contact me on uh, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, also on Facebook if they want. On Facebook, I have another name. My name on LinkedIn is my real name. is Francesca Ludovico. On Facebook is Francesca Hyde, like Dr. Jackie and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for, uh, for having time for us. <laughs> Thank you.